four pig fights. This is the third time this thing has been shot. <laughs> About to load up and head out west to meet up with my buddy Ron. He's going to be giving me a new digital recorder for my old school Pulsar XD50A thermal. Um, this current recorder has a dating issue where the date is wrong and every time the battery cycles it goes back to the wrong date. So Ron used to have the same thermal and he's got two recorders that he believes that will completely eliminate the date and or at least keep the right date. So maybe I'll ask why I haven't just converted and slapped on my new Fuller 736 Thermosite Pro onto my 6.5 Creedmoor. And the reason is, is currently right now, this thermal has 27 loads for the 6.5 Creedmoor already dialed into this. And I don't wanna to have to go through the process of doing that again with the Fleur. Um, and also I've got a system literally in the mail that should be arriving, I believe sometime in the middle of next week that I'm gonna be slapping that onto. So y'all stay tuned for that. I'm gonna be using one of my favorite, if not my favorite bullet for the 6.5 Creedmoor. This is the Hammer 124 grain Hunter bullets. When Steve Davis sent these to me about a year and a half ago, I took five random bullets that were in the package to measure the overall consistency and length, diameter, and weight, and you have got to check this out. The overall length difference between five of the bullets was at a .001. The diameter on all of them were absolutely trued, and the weight tolerance in the five bullets that I measured were consistently at 125.7. Steve Davis sent these bullets to Brian Litz to get a true BC. And um, what you are getting when you are hunting with a Hammer Hunter bullets is a premium hand-turned, custom-loaded, long-range meat-saving bullet. So I wanna do what I wanna do that Steve Davis doesn't know I'm doing. I'm gonna be running these through a hog to show you the neocropsy and why these things are a premium long range um, meat saving bullet. And so if you're gonna be hunting out in mule deer country or in pronghorn country when you wanna go long range and you're gonna be using the 6.5 Creedmoor, this is the one bullet I would definitely advise you to use if you wanna get into the custom hand turned bullets. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all loaded up, head out to West Texas and let's kill us some swine. Ron and I discussed our strategy for hunting tonight. According to his game cam, hogs have been coming in at two different feeders every night between 7.30 and midnight. Ron would hunt one feeder that had large prominent boars. I would hunt the other feeder that had a large sounder of mid-sized sows and piglets. I got to my stand around 6.30 p.m. since the hogs had been coming in early. The feeder was behind me at roughly about 90 yards. Ron warned me that they could come straight in from the coastal field. At exactly 10 p.m. I could hear a noisy sounder coming in from the north-northeast. I was concerned because we had a strong southeast wind and I was worried they would catch my scent. I continued to hear them working towards the feeder. Finally, this one sow presented a perfect broadside shot. This hog dropped on the first shot, and I took a secondary shot to stop the dirt dance. Unfortunately, my recorder video link died, but I did catch the audio. What a perfect time to get a new recording unit. All right, I had to do some poking around, but I finally figured it out. My first shot on the sow was not premium. It was high on the shoulder. Let me zoom out again. This is the shoulder here. It shot just above that and it definitely dropped her. The exit wound is pretty awesome here. And I'll put this open so we can see what it looks like on both sides. And I did a follow-up shot, and that was the entrance right there underneath the neck here. Very nominal entrance, probably about point, I don't know, I don't even have a measurement scale, so I won't be able to do that. And it exited up here, right there and finished her off. So I'm gonna go ahead and start butchering this thing. And my GoPro is unfortunate. Look at that exit wound, very nominal, it's impressive. So I'm gonna, um, I go, since my GoPro is low on batteries, I'm just gonna cut this up and take pictures and uh, talk about it later. This first picture is the entry wound. The second picture is where the hammer bullet entered just above the shoulder. The third picture is where I believe the bullet fully expanded, causing hydraulic shock. Since I missed the shoulder completely, there was no visual sign of bone material in the cavity. And at this point, it's apparent to me that the bullet held together and did not fragment. After rolling over the sow, I'll start from the inside out. This first picture is the cavity that continues from the other side and it looks like I did not hit any vitals besides separating the spine. The next picture is where the hammer bullet blowed straight through the shoulder, shattering the bone, but the bone material did not spur or fragment. 
And finally, this last picture is the final exit wound. I continue to be amazed with the Hammer 124 grain hunter bullets. Even with a bad shot placement, this hog dropped straight into the dirt with its first shot. If you're looking to get the most out of your 6.5 Creedmoor or any caliber, consider stepping into a premium hand-turned custom precision hunting bullet. I will leave Hammer Bullet Company information below. I've got a really new exciting project in the works. I'll give you a hint and say that it'll be zipping over 4,000 FPS. I'll be gone for the next few weeks. I'm headed back down to the coast to continue help with the Hurricane Harvey victims. The following week, I'm going to be volunteering at a summer Christian camp, so be sure to like and subscribe this video, and tell Midsummer, stay tuned for my next adventure.